Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics. Today I thought we would take some time to look at weedless rigging. So we'll do a bit of a weedless rigging 101. Basically we've seen a lot of photos coming in lately of bass, barramundi, mangrove jack and other species pinned beautifully in the corner of the jaw with that weedless hook because the weather's warming, those sorts of species are firing up more and there's lots of people fishing the snags to get at those fish. So basically the advantage of weedless rigging is that we <clears throat> are hiding our hook so that we can fish weed, lilies, timber, all sorts of structure where we would normally not be able to fish because our jig head or our other type of lure would basically snag up or foul up. So weedless rigging, 95% of the fishing I do would be standard rigging, not weedless rigging, but that 5% is when you virtually cannot fish with any other technique. You, that weedless rigging, even if there's a lot of floating weed and junk around in the water, weedless rigging can make that fishing accessible, basically. So there's a lot of situations where you cannot fish with a standard presentation and weedless rigging will unlock those snags and unlock those fish that you can't access otherwise. Basically, in terms of weedless rigging, people say to me, oh, but what, what plastics can I weedless rig? You can virtually rig anything in the Z-Man range weedless. So whether it's a, a crustacean style plastic, whether it's a curl tail, whether it's a jerkbait style plastic, a paddle tail, it doesn't matter. Almost any plastic, virtually every plastic I would think you can, you can weedless rig. Crawfish, doesn't matter what style of, what pattern of lure it is, you can still weedless rig it to get in where you want to get in and catch those fish. The other thing people often say to me is, What's, what is the ideal plastic for weedless rigging? There are some advantage with, advantages with that Z-Man 10 times tougher LazTech plastic. So for me, there are three advantages when it comes to Z-Man and weedless rigging. The first one is that 10 times tough construction. So basically with weedless rigging, we're going in through the chin or we're just pinching, catching a section of the plastic and then we're taking the, the hook back around and back through the plastic. So by being 10 times tough, by being strong and durable, because we're only pinning that tiny piece of plastic, it means that it's not gonna break away easily when we catch a fish or when we're making casts and that sort of thing. So if you go for a more standard style of plastic or a weaker plastic, it's gonna blow out where you're punching it through there. The other great thing with Z-Man is you can punch it through over and over and over and over again. That, that plastic is, is durable and, it's, and it allows you to rig and allows you to re-rig and re-rig and re-rig. So definitely that 10 times tough is a benefit when you're weedless rigging. Another advantage with weedless rigging is that that plastic is super soft and flexible. So that's important. If you're fishing more of a traditional style of plastic that's quite hard, the fish find it difficult to move that plastic away and find the hook. Whereas Z-Man being super soft and flexible, it's very easy for the fish to clear that plastic out of the way and find the hook. So even though it's 10 times tough, it's very, very soft and flexible. And so that allows the fish to clear that hook and get hooked up. The other advantage is that they're buoyant. They're naturally buoyant, which means on a hook like this one here, the chin locks where there's no weight, I can rig this plastic and I can fish it on the surface. Same with our frogs and those sorts of things. Because it's naturally buoyant, it's much easier to fish that plastic weedless on the surface. And then as we want to, we can weight that plastic to get it down deeper around and into the strike zone. So that buoyancy is another important factor when fishing weedless, especially if you're wanting to fish weedless on top. So it makes it easier to fish weedless on top and then weight them to get down. Also, when we're on a weighted style of head, it means that the weight will sit on the bottom and the plastic will stand up off the bottom and look natural and look realistic and trigger those strikes. <clears throat> the trick with this style of plastic is finding a jig head to hold it on when you're rigging weedless. So on a standard hook without any sort of keeper, that plastic can slide down, which can be a little bit frustrating. So TT Lures have designed a bunch of jig heads to assist when weedless rigging with your Z-Man. So back in the day, years ago, we used to use super glue to hold, help hold the soft plastic in place. Occasionally, some people are still super gluing, but most have done away with the super glue because it's messy. So you end up with super glue stuck everywhere, hand stuck to your head, whatever else, you end up in a bit of a mess. Also, it smells, so different super glues have different smells, which is off-putting for some anglers. And also, the other disadvantage with the super glue is once you've glued that plastic in place, 
it can be difficult to quickly and easily swap soft plastics. So if we want to change this from a paddle tail to a crustacean, or we want to quickly change this color, we can do it nice and easy with these keepers that are on the TT Lewis jig heads. Whereas super glue, a bit more difficult, a bit more tricky. So super glue, basically we got frustrated with super glue. And so TT Lewis and Z-Man work together and TT have designed a series of jig heads that are perfect for weedless rigging. They make weedless rigging quick they make it easy, they make it nice and simple for people that want to get into it. So, we've talked about we can pretty much rig any model of plastic weedless. We can also virtually rig any size of plastic in the Z-Man range weedless. So, from our tiny little, tiniest plastic in the range, the two inch grubs, from the two inch grubs, we've got a weedless presentation to suit it, right through to a 10 inch Heroes. So, whether you're fishing eight inch mag swims, 10 inch heroes for kingfish, GTs, all those sorts of things, or you want to weedless rig that plastic and keel it, or whether you want to fish that tiny grubs right in the middle of some snags for some big brim, you can pretty much rig any plastic across the range from the smallest to the largest with this selection of jig heads. And there's some different types of jig heads in here. So we're going to talk about the advantages of each type and why we might use them in what sort of situation. So first cab off the rank, is our chin locks. So let's talk about the keeper first. So the keeper on these jig heads has been designed to catch the chin or a small section of that 10 times tough plastic and lock it in there so that our plastic doesn't slide down the hook. So for example, here I'll catch the chin of this three inch minnows. I then slide it up the hook and I'll actually lock it in to that chin lock. And now that plastic is locked in there. So I can cast hard, I can work the plastic aggressively if I want, the fish can hit it and it's not gonna pull it down the hook. All I then do is I line up where I want the hook to come through, punch the hook through the belly, out the top, and we're weedless rigged and we're ready to go. A fish strikes that and a fish will find the hook. If we wanna change it, we simply reverse what we did and we can take that plastic off and go again. So that little keeper there, we refer to it as a chin lock. So it's a, a mechanism for locking the chin of the plastic in place on the jig head. So our chin locks jig head and our chin locks finesse, they don't have a weight on the hook. They simply have a keeper on there to hold your soft plastic in place. So these are available in a chin locks and also a chin locks finesse and the finesse will have an L. So this one says a one L. So that's a light wire hook or a fine wire hook. So for more finesse presentations, you know, if you wanted to flick this guy in and roll him across the surface, this little grubs or a two and a half inch grubs or a slim swims, you may go for that chin locks finesse, the finer wire hook. Whereas if you want to try and get a bass out of a snag or, you know, buzz some surface for jacks or those sorts of things, you will probably want the chin locks without the finesse version. So the heavy wire hook, not the light wire hook. But they are great for fishing across the surface with your hard leg frogs, even something like a minnows, buzzing a minnows across the top with no weight. So I've got a minnows, here's my minnows here. So a minnows with no weight. So I can actually take my three inch minnows, which is a very versatile plastic. I can flick that up in the drains for Jackson Barra. I can buzz it across the weed beds for bass and I can fish that up on the surface. Just get the rod tip up a bit and let that buoyancy of the plastic carry it across the surface. So that's our chin locks unweighted. So that goes from basically a size four and a finesse right through to a 12 in a chin lock. So if we wanted to fish a big, big plastic unweighted, we can do if we're wanting to. So that's that chin locks. Then if we want a little bit of weight, so sometimes we want a bit of weight on the belly. So for example, one of Jeff Wilton up in North Queensland, one of his favorites is a 2.75 inch finesse frog. But rather than fish it on a straight chin locks, he will fish it on a chin locks SWS. And the SWS stands for snagless weight system. So it's a snagless presentation and it's got that belly weight system. So that belly weight basically assists in giving you weight for casting. It also helps to keel the plastic. And in this case for Jeff, it puts a bit of weight on the back end so he gets a bit more action out of the legs as well. For me, a favorite presentation is the Chinox SWS. So that's a 2.0, 1 12th, 2.0 that Jeff uses. I like a, I like a 1 8th in a 3.0 is excellent presentation up in North Queensland as well. If you're fishing mangrove edges, 
uh, for jacks and barra and that sort of thing. That little bit of belly weight gives you more distant, more weight for casting distance, especially in wind, and it gives you a really slow sink into the snags, which is also excellent on your crustacean style presentations as well, just to get you that slow natural sink down into the snag, give it a few twitches without moving it too far out of the strike zone. So that's the Chinlocks SWS. We've got our Chinlock Keeper and our SWS, our snagless weight system. We've got our weight on that plastic there. So very popular option when you want just a slow sink and natural presentation. So for me, I'll even swim that across the shallow weed beds and that sort of thing for flathead and that as well. Just where I want to, I want a bit more weight for casting distance. I might want to swim it across the top and if I get a hit, I can then allow it to sink and fall back down and then go again. So that's the Chinlox SWS and that's, a, that's available in a bunch of sizes as well, right through to our 12O. So there's a one ounce 12O. So for for people that are, you know, guys that are up in the empowerments fishing big paddle tails, that's a popular one. You can take something like a seven inch diesel minnows, put that weighted 12O on there or 10Os and those sorts of things that we've got as well. And you can swim that plastic right through the weed, right through the timber, right through structure. And um, that weight will get it down to where you want it. And it'll help keel that plastic and manage that big paddle tail on a seven inch diesel or an eight inch mag swims. So that's the belly weighted version. So we've gone from no weight to a belly weight. And then our next step along is our snake locks jig head. So basically we've taken our belly weight off here again and our belly weight is now we've got a head weight on this plastic. So that head weight goes right through to quite heavy weights allowing us to still fish it finesse and shallow and run it over weed, or we can put a chunk of weight on there and get it right down and fish faster, fish deeper if we want to. These heads can be switched off here, so we can clip our head off and on. What that allows you to do is it allows you to carry a variety of hooks and also a variety of head weights, and you can mix and match. So if you're fishing an area and all of a sudden you're fishing shallower water, you can lighten your head. If you want to go heavier, you can put a heavier head on. All of a sudden you get to an area where you're finding some bigger fish you could just clip your plastic off clip on a bigger plastic and away you go so we've got our no weight on our hook but we do have our weight on our head and that's a stainless steel through wire through there so very very strong connection there as well again fish finds it boom that that plastic clears very easily so that we can get a solid hook set and that snake locks is available like our chin locks, it's available in a snake locks. It's also available in a snake locks finesse. So in that fine wire, and it goes right down to that number four. So you can put the tiniest plastic in the Z-Man range on a snake locks finesse if you want to. So there we go, there's a, a grubs, two and a half inch grubs, weedless on a snake locks finesse. So you can fish right in amongst those trees and timber. We've got our th three and a half inch easy shrimps rigged on a snake locks there, great presentation, that crustacean presentation. And one of my favorites when I'm fishing the snake locks finesse is the size two is beautiful in a two and a half inch slim swims. So that two and a half inch slim swims with that underhook tail, a tail like no other that thing, it has got a crazy tail action and that's been deadly in amongst the weed and broken weed and rubble and that sort of thing for chasing flathead. So if you like to fish your flathead and you fish in weedy sort of country, Probably they're the two that I would carry. I would carry a two and a half inch slim swims on a size two in a snake locks finesse. And I would carry a snake locks 3.0 for my three inch minnows. And those two presentations I've caught a lot of flathead in amongst the weed where you're virtually impossible to fish with other presentations. So that's our snake locks and our snake locks finesse. So our snake locks finesse, you'll see on the packet, again, it has so it'll say finesse series and it's also got an l for a light wire hook so that's our finesse series so that's our no weight belly weight and then our head weight what i have seen some people do as well is they take that uh, chin locks sws with the belly weight and they'll clip a head weight onto that as well if they're wanting some additional weight and that sort of thing and that's an option totally no problem doing that so that's our chin locks and our snake locks and our Chinlocks SWS. There is another new addition, which is awesome. I've fished it, had a great time with it already. And this is a cool presentation for those that have tried the Nedrig or like the Nedrig style of fishing. So basically, if you haven't heard of the Nedrig, 
It uses a mushroom style head and because of the natural buoyancy of the Z-Man, it has a rapid stand-up style presentation. So the plastic's always working for you. If you're moving it away, it's fleeing. As soon as you stop, it just stands up rapidly. So it either stands up with its claws up, like a little TRD Craws in a defensive style pose, or with our grubs or something like that, it stands up with the tail up like it's feeding naturally in the bottom. So it's attracting fish and triggering strikes all the time. And these are a new addition. So this is a Nedlox EWG. So basically it's a wide gape worm hook in a mushroom style head. So with that keeper on there, that chin lock keeper. So you can get that same effect of the rapid stand up of the Ned rig and those claws up or that tail up, but you can do it in a weedless style presentation. So it's available in a 1 15th, 1 10th, 1 6th and 1 5th ounce. So excellent for fishing from super shallow stuff to your edges of your drop offs and those sorts of things. And they're all in a size one heavy duty VMC hook. So the cool thing about that size one is it fits perfectly in a lot of the finesse presentations. So whether it's a two and a half inch grubs, a two and a half inch slim swims, a 2.5 inch TRD craws or a 2.75 inch TRD bugs, all of those rig beautifully on that, and we've already had great success on the uh, flathead and also on the brim, fishing brim around snags and flathead and that in the weed and, and timber and structure and that sort of thing. And they're gonna be dynamite on the bass and yellow belly and a stack of other species as well. So that's the Nedlox EWG, and it's another great option for fishing weedless. So fishing those areas where you can't normally fish, especially when there's a lot of structure and you're going to lose a lot of gear or you're going to spend a lot of your time re-rigging and taking weed off lures and all that sort of thing when you could be fishing more productively. So as we said, any type of thing as well, experiment with any plastic in your kit. A favourite for some anglers is actually a five inch streaks or a five inch centre jerk shad rigged weedless and they slide it through the weed and stuff for flathead and other species, barra even up north and that sort of thing. And it just sort of, they can dart it, they can let it glide really naturally and it does get a lot of bites on those flats and that sort of thing as well. As we said, our crustacean style, so we've got our jerk bait, our crustacean, there's a four inch streaks curly tail, a great one on the bass and that sort of thing as well as the flathead. Uh, we've got our frog, We've got our, oh, we're pretty well done. So jerk baits, crustaceans, frogs, curl tails, oh, our paddle tails, our paddle tails as well. So there isn't much that you cannot weedless rig. And in that Z-Man, dur the durability of that Z-Man makes it a perfect option for weedless rigging. The only other thing I'd probably say when I weedless rig is make sure you throw a bit of Procure Super Gel on there. So make sure you're sent up because you do want a good, solid, aggressive take. You want a solid, solid strike so that you get a solid hook set because you are concealing that hook in the plastic a little bit more. So a more aggressive strike is gonna clear that plastic more effectively. The other thing I say to people is if you're fishing weedless and you're fishing slow and you are getting the odd bump and not hooking up, try keeping it moving. So for me, if I get in the weed chasing the flathead in the shallows, where I might stall and pause and that a lot more with a um, standard presentation when fishing sandy and rubbly areas, once I get into that heavier weed, I'll often skip it and move it a bit quicker because the fish are in there looking to ambush bait. There's a lot of prawns and things skipping around and bait fish. So one solution is to move the lure a little bit quicker, pause for shorter pauses, and you'll find because the lure is moving, when the fish hits it, you'll get that solid hook set. And the great thing about weedless rigging is when you do get that hook set, it's often right in the corner of the jaw, so it's much harder for the fish to shake that lure once they are hooked. So there you go. If you've got any more questions, you're welcome to fire them through to us. But in terms of weedless rigging, it is a very, very effective way to fish those areas that you wouldn't normally fish and access those fish that you cannot normally access. Z-Man, 10 times tough, perfect plastic for weedless rigging. And those TT lures options have been designed to suit that style of plastic. So check out the chin locks, the chin locks SWS and those snake locks and snake locks finesse. And also that new little Nedlocks EWG, if you are wanting to give weedless rigging a go. It's been great to talk to some of you. I know in the past that I've talked about weedless rigging and you've come back to me and said, brilliant, I'm catching flat out of the weed, or I'm smacking bass in the snags, or I'm catching barra out of the weed beds where I hadn't fished before. So that's the stuff we love hearing. Get out there, give weedless rigging a crack, and I hope to see a picture of you hooked up with a solid fish soon. Cheers.